Welcome back to Ox Tools. I'm Tom. So we get uh, uh, an epic uh, egress update. So uh, I've been working in the uh, well. I've been working at both sites, uh, prepping up there and moving things up there, tearing apart the shop. Uh, we just finished a big session here at the at the shop, um, and uh, I'll show you some of the things that uh, have gone down here. So uh, um, and. Basically, it's uh, me and another guy doing the work. Uh, a friend of mine, uh, Ed Russell, came over and we disconnected uh, uh, some hardwired machines. We took down, there was a pallet rack here that we took down. Um, the big job of the day was uh, removing my jib crane that was attached to that column over there. So that was a big deal. And it's kind of a two person job. I put it up there by myself, but that's probably the six years younger uh, than uh, and when I did it. But let's, uh, let's take a look around and uh, show you some of the piles of stuff. Not a lot to look at, but uh, I figure uh, uh, you guys are curious about what's going on in the move and, uh, and how it's going. I'm still alive, uh, I'm not injured, and, uh, um, but I'm certainly uh, uh, um, using some muscles I haven't used in a while. Let's just put it that way. So let's check it out. So that's the pallet rack pile or part of the pallet rack pile and then the uh, the jib crane there. Um, I'm actually not going to use that because I built the uh, the gantry for the new place. So uh, we pulled the hoist off of that and um, that was a whole little operation and then um, removed the strut and then uh, lowered the uh, lowered the beam down to uh, and put it on a dolly to get it out of the way. So uh, that took a couple hours to get that down. But uh, I'll show you how I'm packing some of this heavy stuff up, which might be of interest to you too. So, so what I've been doing with some of the uh, the kind of heavy items and stuff, um, they're they they're really not appropriate for cardboard boxes. Um, so I I got some uh, cast off um, wood crates, and um, you know instead of trying to build them myself, right? So these you can uh, you can. Pretty much load up with a uh, uh, with whatever you want to put in them, as long as the stuff can't get crushed. And then you can put stuff in between the layers and whatnot. And if you nest it in there nicely, uh, you can get a, well, you can get a thousand or fifteen hundred pounds in one of these of stuff um, if you're careful. And then you just handle these with the pallet jack. So um, and then you can move them around and uh, get them on the lift gate and get them into the into the truck and whatnot. So. Uh, Anyway, I got a bunch of these, and that's what I've been filling up and running out into the truck, um, and uh, doing that. So that's uh, you know inter interesting, lowering heavy stuff down into uh, the box with uh, a rat back. <laughs> so we removed some hardwired machines. This was one of them here. Um, this is uh, was 100 amps uh, going to this uh, particular machine here, single phase. Um, and um, so that took a little while because we had to open the panel up and safe it out and do all that stuff too. Um, so this is ready to go. The uh, belt sander was hardwired in and uh, the vertical, the Acra mill was hardwired in. Everything else is kind of on plugs and that, that's how the new place is going to be. It's going to be all on, on twist lock plugs, which is, it just makes it easier to reconfigure the space and you don't have to, uh, you don't have to putz around. So. So this is where the jib crane was here, and um, it was mounted to this column here, and there's a couple of studs that you can still see there and up at the top. And that's, it basically it was clamped to the column, and then those were my chicken studs there. That, um, uh, you know, I did the calculations, but it wasn't uh, that much more to uh, add a couple studs to that. So that was the, uh, the, the pivot and the strut mount. And then the way I got it down was, uh, if you see those little clips up here, um, those are unistrut clips that are uh, red-headed into the, into the concrete above. And uh, so we just hooked a, um, uh, some slings to that and then used a, uh, a chain fall to lower the, uh, uh, the beam down, which worked out pretty good. Now keep in mind, uh, from where I'm standing to there, uh, to the ceiling is 17 and a half feet. So uh, it's kind of squirrely work, you know, when you're, you're un 
loosening fasteners uh, that are torqued. Uh, these were torqued to uh, like 85 foot pounds, um, you know, to get the, the right tension on the clamp rods and all that. So, uh, so anyway, it was. Uh, <laughs> uh, my legs are feeling it, you know, go, going up and down the ladder. So, uh, but uh, anyway, we got it done and uh, no uh, no mishaps or anything. So I'm pretty happy about that. So metrology is pretty gutted right now. Um, I did a lot of work in here uh, the last couple of days, packing up instruments and, uh, and gauge pins and all kinds of stuff. And uh, so a lot of this stuff got cleared out. There's still more to go, but uh, um, I put, put a pretty good dent in this. Um, <laughs> my, in my booze collection, I gotta <laughs> either uh, drink it up or, uh, or pack it up, I don't know. <laughs> That's a little too much though, so uh, it probably get packed up, so. <laughs> so one might wonder, when you got a zillion uh, little uh, instruments and boxes and optical flats and levels and all kinds of junk like that, how do you pack them up safely to, to move them, right? Well, I was struggling with that myself and um, um, so what I'm doing is um, I have a large quantity of these uh, priority mail um, uh, shipping boxes which the US Post Office gives away for free by the way. Um, so it allows me to pack these instruments very carefully and put some padding in them and not have a, a super heavy box uh, that's uh, subject to crushing and damage and whatnot. So, and then I can label them um, uh, with their contents and whatnot. And then I can reuse the boxes for shipping uh, cool stuff off uh, to folks. I mean, that's kind of what I'm doing uh, right now. Uh, and I may uh, order, or well, run over to the post office and snag a, <laughs> another couple of handfuls of these things. So I found another use. Um, you know, I've been, uh, I've been talking this stuff up. This is this uh, pig, uh, uh, pig product. Uh, it's uh, self, it's adhesive uh, floor mat. So it's got a tacky back on it. And then it's, uh, it's basically floor mat that you put in shops to uh, wipe the oil and grease off your feet, right? But I've been finding all kinds of alternate uses for it, and here's another one, is to protect surface plates, right? Uh, this is getting protected for transport here, but um, it sticks to the granite, it doesn't leave uh, any residue on it, and it won't, it won't slide off, so I can, you know, feel comfortable about stacking stuff on here or whatever and, uh, and not harming the plate. Um, so anyway, that works pretty good. I just stuck a piece on there and then cut around it. And uh, it seems to work pretty good for that. And, you know, this is the kind of stuff I'm up against, right? I mean, this isn't a particularly big surface plate, but I, uh, you know, I can pick one end up myself, right? But I can't pick the whole thing up myself. So having a second person, um, you know, my friend Ed came out and, uh, and I said, oh, hey, well, we'll, I'll just get the engine hoist and we'll rig that up. He goes, oh, just grab one side, boot, and we moved it, right? So, uh, the value of having uh, a friend or uh, a volunteer is uh, cannot be overemphasized. Let's just uh, say that. <laughs> Thank you, Ed. Okay, that's about all I got right now. I got some um, some other little clips that I shot uh, up in the new shop. Um, a um, I got a nice, uh, a very generous donation from a, a fellow in Washington, and you'll get to see that and. Uh, that was an, uh, an interesting uh, unloading uh, exercise uh, out of a uh, Nissan Xterra, <laughs> a uh, 20 horsepower uh, uh, motor and some other stuff uh, had to come out of there, so uh, with no tools. <laughs> anyway, that was kind of fun. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching and uh, we'll try to keep these updates coming. Um, but uh, needless to say, I'm concentrating on the move and not so much on the, on the filming and whatnot. So appreciate your patience and uh, see you next time. So we got the, uh, another uh, epic egress uh, update. So I'm here in the new shop and I've been moving all week. Um, we finished phase two, which was moving the household stuff. So phase one 
just to remind you, was moving my wife's art studio, which was <laughs> a non-insignificant uh, task. Uh, phase two was moving the household stuff and then doing some preparatory stuff on the house uh, so that uh, uh, we can have, we can live up here, right? And um, not that it needed a lot, but there were some things that had to happen uh, as part of that. So we're pretty much done with phase two and starting to nibble on phase three, which is moving the shop. So yeah, it's taken longer than I expected, which is to be expected. <laughs> Um, I do want to just say thank you, thank you, thank you to all the folks that, uh, that bought uh, t-shirts and I'm wearing one of them, right? I bought a couple for myself too, right? Uh, this is the, the pocket version and I got my, uh, so I'm turning into a rancher now, right? Uh, when, you go to the, when you go to the tractor supply, you got to have your list and, uh, or the hardware store or whatever, you better have your list with you and uh, be prepared to get all the goodies that you need to get because uh, driving into town is 20 minutes or whatever it is uh, from here. Um, anyway, thank you guys, uh, uh, the folks that bought t-shirts and um, the awesome, generous viewers. Uh, I am humbled uh, and <laughs> without words, literally, uh, some folks donated uh, uh, cash through PayPal, uh, which surprised me. And, um, um, and I'm very appreciative of that. Thank you very much for all those folks that did that. So uh, it, it all helps. You know, it buys an LED fixture, it buys a, you know, whatever it needs to buy, right? So thank you. And uh, there's link, if folks that uh, want a t-shirt that haven't bought one, uh, there's links at the bottom to Store Frontier where you get a pocket one or, um, full-size logo one like this right and you know I get it some folks don't uh, they don't want to wear uh, advertising t-shirts or whatever uh, that's cool no problem um, and you know what is that Sun coming through there and catching that oh no we're okay all right so um, I get it and it's it's not a problem so um, and uh, any helps appreciated and if you don't feel like doing it hey it's okay too right I put my content out there for free and um, basically it is an archive of my journey and my experiences in the trade and I share that knowledge with you guys freely. So uh, uh, you don't need to pay for it, okay? And you never will need to pay for it, okay? So hey, let's take a look at something I gotta do here and uh, with basically no tools, this ought to be interesting, right? All right, here's the deal. The previous owner of this building um, didn't follow the, uh, the rules of roll-up doors. They're either all the way up or they're all the way down. There's no in-between. So uh, if you don't like paying for roll-up door repairs, follow those, that simple rule and you'll never have a problem. Now, um, they had a big uh, uh, motorhome and I think they misjudged um, uh, how high to raise the door. These doors go up 14 feet, so uh, that's uh, plenty tall. But they clipped the door and uh, it bent it out, outward slightly. And, you know, I had noticed it, so no big deal, right? But uh, what happened is I had, uh, I was unloading some stuff here and I ran the door all the way up. I followed my rule. I ran the door all the way up. Well, when I went to lower it, the door jammed and it wouldn't come down. It started coming down on one side, but not on the other. So, and I didn't have a ladder tall enough and uh, to reach the thing. So I had to get pretty creative and uh, do some uh, pretty sketchoid. <laughs> um, so I had a rental truck and uh, so I backed the rental truck in and, um, and put uh, on the lift gate, I put a, the six foot ladder that I had stood at the top of the six foot ladder and I was able to get a lasso around the, uh, um, around the, base of the door and then uh, physically pull it down. But what I want to do now is I want to try to straighten this a little bit so that I don't have that problem. Um, but I don't have many tools here. So uh, bear with me. It's going to be uh, um, uh, rough and ready.
Alright, well let me explain what I'm doing here. So I need something, I need something that's got some mass to it to kind of uh, act like a dolly on this side of the door um, so that I can hit it on the other side and get a reaction out of it or you know actually move some material. So the uh, the idea here was yeah okay um, the rig was just to uh, get me centered on the dent or on the crease and then I'm going to put this in here to help support it then I'm going to go around the other side and give it a give it a, give it a hit with a hammer at least that's the plan uh, or gentle taps let's put it so here you can see the the injury there and I got it pushed out a little bit. Oh yeah, it feels pretty firm. I gotta be a little bit careful. I brought a small hammer. <laughs> and then I'm gonna put this across here to to so it doesn't um, so it delocalizes the blow. Alright. I'm doing any good. Let's maybe that's better if I do it like that. Oh, it's got a big piece of meat. better um, I'm doing some good I'm not doing all bad <laughs> yeah this just got caught at the top it wedged on that and then it wouldn't uh, it wouldn't move so it's take another look at it well I made some improvements but I don't have the right stuff, so I'm, I'm going to stop now before I <laughs> cause more damage than, uh, than, uh, than I want to. Um, this is a piece of steel angle here at the bottom, and you see, I don't know if you can see that, but it's got a, a big wow in it there because um, it's kicked out a little bit. So what I need is I need a strong back, and I need to straighten this flange and straighten that other flange a little bit. And then that this will follow along with it, I think. So, um, so I'm gonna I'll bring some special stuff up to do this, and then uh, hopefully uh, cover it in the next uh, in the next update thing. Although I, I have made some improvements to it, um, and I have a method for pulling the door down if it gets stuck again, at least. So uh, I need to be able to get this all the way up um, when the uh, big forklifts here to uh, unload machines, I want this door to be able to go all the way up. So, uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> thanks for watching. <laughs> watching me struggle uh, on the ranch here, so. <laughs> Alright, can you guys see that? I just want to show you how awesome the viewership is, right? So, I, I casually mentioned offhand that, uh, that I was going to be uh, needing a rotary phase converter for the new shop since I only have single phase power in the new shop. I've been a spoiled brat uh, for years now in my uh, current shop because I have three phase power. Well, one of my viewers, uh, a guy named Jesse Wren of Landbridge uh, Lighting, there's a link in the, uh, in the description to his website, um, he says, hey, I got this American Rotary uh, uh, phase converter I bought from my shop that I can't use anymore. Never been used. You want it? And I said, okay, what's, what's the deal? What do you want for it? Well, you know, he says, it's yours. It's 
you know, pay for shipping or whatever, or come get it. And I said, geez, okay. Um, <laughs> anyway, so uh, um, coincidentally, a friend of mine, uh, John, uh, was traveling to uh, northern Washington, and he actually made a stop and visited uh, Jesse's shop and loaded this this beast of a converter uh, into his, uh, his SUV and dropped it off at my new place here. And now we had some, uh, I'll, I'll put a picture up of how we uh, rigged this thing up to get it out of the, uh, out of the truck, uh, which was kind of interesting because I got jack for tools here and, uh, and lifting equipment. But anyway, you know, he didn't want anything for it, he donated it to the cause, and Jesse, I really appreciate it, I just wanted to say thank you uh, on camera publicly. Uh, it's an extremely generous donation and it will go to good use. It's a 20 horsepower American Rotary ADX, which is one of their, you know, really nice units. Um, and, um, and if you don't know about American Rotary, you should go check them out. And if you have a need of a of real three-phase, uh, these guys can set you up. They have units all the way up to hundreds of horsepower. And um, um, they are very generous sponsors of the Bar Z Bash and kind of the YouTube uh, machining community in general. So uh, um, anyway, good folks to work with. And uh, this is a, you know, this is a top shelf unit here. So we'll get this thing set up and uh, put it to good use here. So Jesse, once again, thank you for your generous donation. And yeah, I just want to thank all the viewers out there that, you know, have helped out and, uh, and it's very humbling for, for me, certainly, to accept these things. And, um, um, but uh, I just want to say I, I really appreciate it. So thank you very much. So it's all going to be worth it. Look at look at the light here. It's super quiet, super private. I'm all by myself, and uh, it's going to be pretty awesome. And I got a lot to look forward to. And uh, I want to thank all the folks out there that uh, have helped out and made this possible for me. So, all right, catch you next time.